Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about, like our Super Reward Checking with one of the highest interest rates in the nation, and there are no ATM or monthly service fees, zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to ProvidenceCU.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union.
If you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus, in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet, mix, and spark. Eyes open. Doors open. It's real. You can feel it. You can be a part of it. And you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit.
Well, good afternoon from Ben the Daddy Diamond. This is Diamond Don's Baseball in Game 3 of this series between USF and St. Mary's. The two teams play again tomorrow in the non-conference game, but this is the rubber match of the West Coast Conference portion of the series as the Dons will put the right-hander on the mound, the freshman Eric Razelman. These two teams have split the first couple of ball games on Friday afternoon, USF in come from behind fashion with a 5-4 win over the Gales. St. Mary's yesterday won 6-4, scoring four times in the first inning. So the Dons trailed and made it close in the late innings, but couldn't quite get over the hump. So today, it'll be Razelman to try and get the Dons a win in this series and get them back on track in West Coast Conference play. The St. Mary's lineup under second year head coach Greg Moore. Coleman Schmidt, the freshman right fielder, will lead off. Kyle Velasquez, the shortstop, hit second. Justin Banks again, the DH hitting third. The center fielder, Blake Mann, bats cleanup. Mick, Nick Bastoni over at second base in the number five spot. Batting sixth is the first baseman, Gabe Gioso. The left fielder, Ryan Ellis, hits seventh. The number eight hitter is the third baseman, Chris Santiago. And J.C. Santini, the catcher, hits number nine. Racelman making his seventh start. It's his 13th appearance. He's pitched 19 innings, allowing 18 runs. 17 of those have been earned runs. He's walked 20 with 16 strikeouts. A record of two wins, two losses, and 8.05 earned run average. Pleasant afternoon here at the ballpark. First pitch of the ball game from Razelman is down low at 1.02 p.m. Game time temperature 70 degrees with a slight breeze 15 miles per hour from the west. We are told those winds will pick up today and get a bit more gusty throughout the afternoon. But a very pleasant day at first pitch and this is up high and it's 2-0. Dons have had difficulty in the first inning each of the last two days here at the ballpark. The Gales on Friday put up a three-run first inning, sent eight men to the plate. They also sent eight men to the plate yesterday in the first inning and put up four runs. And the leadoff man, Schmidt, out in front in the count, 3-0. Razelman in 19 innings has issued 20 walks. There's a strike poured in. The home plate umpire today is Dwayne Finley. On the first base side, Mike Lusky and Timothy Vesey is on the third base side. Three balls and a strike just getting started. Dons and St. Mary's. Strike poured in there, a fastball. Count evens up now. At, or the count goes full, three and two. Pepperdine leading at Portland, two nothing. That's in the bottom half of the fourth rubber game of that series. And called strike three on the outside corner. So Razelman comes back to retire Schmidt. Number three, shortstop Kyle Velasquez. And it's the shortstop Kyle Velasquez. Velasquez hitting 265. He has not gone deep this year. He's driven in eight runs. Up a bit more in the lineup for Velasquez. On Friday, he hit fifth in the order. Yesterday afternoon, he hit fifth in the lineup. Today, he is in the number two spot. One ball, no strikes. Swing and a miss, one and one. Razelman in his last outing over in Stockton pitched two and two thirds against the Tigers. 
Allowing a run, it was earned. He walked three. Had three strikeouts. Threw 65 pitches. That's his uh, longest stint of the year as far as number of pitches thrown. He did have a four-inning stint against BYU back on March 27th. As the count goes to three and one. Threw 55 pitches in that ball game, but four full innings. Two and two-thirds a week ago. Picked up the win in the contest against the Tigers. Here's a ground ball left field and a base hit. That was a 17 to four Don's victory in Stockton. So Velasquez on with the single. It's his third hit in this series. Brings up the DH, Justin Banks. Banks is one for six in the series with two runs scored. He has homered. So Razelman out of the stretch now. The Don's first baseman, Munoz, will hold on the runner, Velasquez, who has four steals and six tries. He goes, taken outside. McCarthy's throw sails high. And in there with his fifth steal of the year is Velasquez. Don's defensive alignment, I just mentioned McCarthy. He's the battery mate with Razelman. On the infield from third around to first, Kieschel, Winkler, Grime, and Munoz in the outfield. Westerman out in left field today. Davis in center and Williams in right. So a bit different alignment defensively in the outfield. We've become accustomed to Jovetic in center and Foster out in left. So the lineup juggled a bit today for the Don's 23rd year head coach, Nino Giratano. One ball, no strikes to Banks, hitting 225. He has nine home runs, 23 RBIs. Ground ball to his left is Grime. He'll go to Munoz. That was the only play he had as Velasquez scoots along to third. Banks retired 4-3 on the putout. Two down, the batter is the center fielder, Mann. Center fielder, Blake Mann. Mann has been swinging it well in this series. He is three for five with a home run, two runs driven in, three runs scored. He's walked, he's been hit by a pitch. He's been on base five times so far here on the weekend. Strike up at the letters to Mann, who's hitting 260. Four homers, 23 runs driven in. Runner at third with two down. There he is, Velasquez. Third base coach over there is Riley Goulding. There's a strike on the inside corner, 0-2. Pacific leads at Santa Clara 4-1. to one. That's in the top half of the fourth and the rubber game of that three-game set. Fastball foul. Count stays at 0-2. West Coast Conference last night. It was San Diego with a four-run ninth inning coming from behind to defeat Brigham Young, 13 to 12. Pepperdine won at Portland, seven to five. Here's the 0-2 inside, one and two. And a game that finished after our ball game yesterday, the Santa Clara Broncos picked up a run in the bottom of the ninth to tie the Tigers, and then they won it with a run in the 11th, 7-6 over Pacific to even up that series. So right now you have Gonzaga idle this weekend with their COVID stoppage. The Bulldogs 14-4. and 
San Diego next, 15 and six, and then USF, 14 and nine. Outside, two and two. So the Dons are gonna need a little help down the stretch if they wanna win the West Coast Conference. Probably need to win their last four ball games. That would go without saying. And then they're gonna need San Diego to take a couple losses here and there. They need Gonzaga to get knocked off by some folks. Ground ball to his left, Kieschel. Across over to Munoz, 5-3 on the putout. And we go to the bottom half of the first inning. No score on the hilltop on the WCC network. After half inning of play, it's the Gales number. Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about. Like our super reward checking with one of the highest interest rates in the nation. And there are no ATM or monthly service fees. Zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to ProvidenceCU.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union. Bottom half of the first inning on the hilltop. Dons will be facing a left-hander today, Kai Bush, making his 12th start of the year. He's pitched 61 innings, 54 hits allowed with 11 walks, so 65 base runners. Strike poured into Kieschel. 22 runs allowed, 19 earned runs. A record of five and four, a 2.80 earned run average. Kieschel punches one out into right center. This will fall for a base hit. So the leadoff man aboard for USF here in the first inning. Give me a chance to run through the USF lineup. Ryan Davis, the center fielder, hits number two in the order. Jack Winkler at shortstop hits third. As you see that Texas leaguer drop in on the replay. Jacob Westerman, the cleanup man, the left fielder. The DH today, Jordan Vujovic hits fifth. Harris Williams, the right fielder, bats fifth. Jacob Munoz at first base, hitting number seven in the order. Thomas McCarthy, the catcher, hits eighth. And Brandon Grime at second baseman hits number nine. And up high and outside to Davis. Davis with his third consecutive start here this weekend. He's two for seven in the series with a double, a home run, two RBIs, and a run scored. Kieschel, a threat to steal, held on by Gioso over at first base. The left-hander Bush from the stretch and a strike. A lot of lefties in the lineup against the left-handed throwing Bush. You have Davis here, the left-handed batter, and then... The fifth, sixth, seventh, and ninth spots in the order, all left-handed hitters, Vujovic, Williams, Munoz, and Grime. Keisha leaning. Bush to home plate. Davis squares to bunt and takes a strike. One ball, one, and two strikes now. Davis hitting 231, three home runs, and 13 RBIs. 
Defensively for St. Mary's working with Bush is Santini behind home plate. Gioso at first, Mistoni at second, Velasquez at short, Santiago at third. Swing and a miss by Davis, strike three. In the outfield, Ellis in left, Mann in center, and Schmidt in right. And the base coaches for USF, Troy Nakamura at third, Alan Schmoot, the first base coach. And the batter is the Don shortstop, Jack Winkler. Winkler hitting 295, five home runs, 27 RBIs. Winkler two for six in the series with a home run. Way outside to Winkler, one and zero. Oh. Bush peers in. And a strike. In his last outing against Brigham Young, Bush pitched six innings. Gave up seven hits, three runs, but only two earned runs, six strikeouts. He was a tough luck loser in that ball game against BYU. Pretty good outing. Keisha Lenin. And a swing and a miss by Winkler, one and two. Bush picked up victories in each of his previous two outings. Back on April 18th, went seven innings against Santa Clara. Gave up just a couple of hits, two runs, only one earned run. Got the win. And then two weeks ago against Pacific at home, went six and two-thirds, three hits, one run it was earned. An excellent outing. He had seven strikeouts in that ball game as Kieschel goes. Pitch is taken low, and the throw is low. And Kieschel is in with his seventh steal of the year. And the count now two and two to Winkler. So Bush has been pretty solid lately. His last three games, he's gone a minimum of six innings. Swing and a miss by Winkler. Struck him out. Two down in the inning. Two strikeouts in the inning for Bush. Bush at 6'6", 240, a junior from Ogden, Utah. Transferred in from Central Arizona. He was 5-1 over seven starts with a 2.43 earned run average in 33 and one-third innings at Central Arizona. He had 43 strikeouts in 33 and a third. Out of high school, selected in the 40th round of the 2018 Major League Baseball Draft by the Kansas City Royals. But opting for the college route. Facing now the cleanup man, Westerman. Westerman hitting 283, four homers. 19 RBIs. Bats with two down and Kieschel out there at second in scoring position. Nothing, nothing ball game. Swing and a foul into the catcher's mitt. And a strike. One and one. Westerman here this weekend, one for five. With a double and RBI. Right-handed hitter against the left-handed throwing Bush. Low. And the count, two balls and one strike on Westerman. Westerman with good power has eight doubles, the four home runs I alluded to. 
His slugging percentage at 500. Making his 22nd start of the year. Two one. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Count evens up. Bush trying now an opportunity to strike out the side. Mention he's a good strikeout pitcher. 80 strikeouts in 61 innings. Tremendous. The opponents hitting just 236 this year against Bush. Boy, you look at his numbers, you wonder how he's just five and four. Had a couple tough luck losses along the way. This is fouled right back to us. And the count stays at two and two. Grounded foul. So we'll do it again. Game three of this series. Don's won 5 4 on Friday. Gales won 6 to 4 yesterday afternoon. Two-two, swing and a miss, struck him out, and Bush strikes out the side. Don's leave, Keishel at second. We played one full, nothing, nothing on the WCC network. Number five, second baseman Nick Moscone. Bottom half of the second inning for St. Mary's. It's the number five hitter, the second baseman Mistoni, then Gioso and Ellis. Razelman, high fastball, won the note to Mistoni. Mistoni hitting 238, 18 RBIs. In this series, two for eight, with four runs driven in. Out to right field, Williams moving maybe a step back to make the catch, one out. Brings up the first baseman, Gioso. Gioso one for eight in the series. First baseman, Gabe Gioso. Hitting 209 with a home run, five RBIs. Gioso has hit ninth in the lineup each of the last two days. Hitting sixth in the order here today. Yeah. 
Portland has tied up Pepperdine up in the Northwest. That game now even 2-2 in the bottom half of the fifth inning. The Pilots trying to maintain pace with the leaders. Portland 12-8 in fourth place. Just a half game behind USF right now. Based on the different number of ball games teams have played. Portland finishing its 21st West Coast Conference today game today. The Dons are playing their 24th WCC game. Squaring to Bunchioso, it's a big hop to Kieschel, and he'll throw to Munoz in time. And Gioso is gunned down 5-3. Two outs in the inning, the batter is the left fielder, Ellis. Ellis, a freshman hitting 237. Number one, left fielder, Ryan Ellis. Ellis, three for seven in the series with an RBI. Also walks, so he's been on four times. Facing Razelman with the bases empty. Nobody out here in the second inning. Outside, 1-0. and oh. Ground ball up the middle and a base hit. And on into center field. So a two out single for Ellis. His fourth hit in the series. And it's the third baseman, Santiago. Number 33, third baseman, Chris Santiago. Santiago one for four in the series. Average at 125 for the season. Takes a long look over in the third base coach's box at third base coach Riley Goulding. Now a throw to first by Razelman. And back with a slide is Ellis. Ellis, a threat to steal. He has six, six thefts in eight tries on the base paths. Razelman from the stretch. High fastball. Don's baseball brought to you by Planet Orange for the Bay Area's best eco-friendly pest control at planetorange.com. Nothing, nothing ball game. Gales no runs on two hits. The Don's no runs on one hit. Throw to first. Back is Ellis. They're on now to the top half of the sixth in Portland. Still tied 2-2. Bottom four in Santa Clara, 4-2 Tigers over the Broncos. Breaking ball taken low, runner goes, throw by McCarthy. Scoots on into center field and Ellis in with his seventh steal of the year. Taken for ball two, 2-0 two to Santiago. So the Gales now have a runner in scoring position. A two-out opportunity here for Santiago. He's driven in four runs this year. Razelman at the belt. And he takes a look back at second base, looking the runner back in. The runner out there is Ellis. Strike poured in right at the knees. The count two and one.
2-1 from Razelman. Breaking ball strike. Two and two. Just a hair outside, count now full, three and two. Don's outfield pushed a bit around more towards right field here for the right-headed hitting Santiago. And that's ball four. Uh, the Gales with two on, two outs here in the second inning. Brings up the number nine hitter, the catcher Santini. Number 23, catcher J.C. Santini. Gales have scored all their runs in this series in the first three innings. They scored four runs on Friday, three in the first, one in the second. Six runs here yesterday, four in the first, two in the third. Making some noise here in the early innings. And a strike poured in by Razelman. The runner at second is Ellis at first, Santiago. No balls and a strike to Santini. Hi to Santini, who's hitting 179. He does have two home runs. He's driven in 10 runs. In this series, still looking for his first hit. He's 0 for 7. Strike two, one and two. Fly ball left field towards the corner. This is a foul ball. So everybody scoots back on to their respective bases. Ellis back to second. Santiago back over to first. And Santini back in with the count still one and two. That was a long run for Westerman. They Pretty much have Santini the same way they played Santiago. The USF outfielders just a shade towards right field. The center fielder Davis out more in right center. The left fielder Westerman more towards left center. Runners go, at least the lead runner Ellis goes with no throw from McCarthy. The trail runner Santiago wasn't moving, but Ellis in there with his eight steal. So now it's runners at first and third, and the count two and two. Ellis at third, Santiago at first, two outs in the inning. Santini the batter. Swing and a miss struck him out. 
So the Gales leave two on the base path. We go to the bottom half of the second. Nothing, nothing on the WCC network. If you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus, in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet, mix, and spark. Eyes open. Doors open. It's real. You can feel it. You can be a part of it. And you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit. Home half of the second inning, the USF Dons will have the number five hitter, the D.H. Vujovic, then the right fielder, Williams, and the first baseman, Munoz. Three left-handed batters against the left-hander, Bush. And one ball, no strikes to Vujovic. Vujovic, a 204 hitter, but he's drawn 27 walks. He's also been hit seven times. So when you factor in the 34 free passes, his on-base percentage is at 394. Ahead in the count, 2-0. The 2-0 from Bush is inside for ball three. Vujovic, one of those guys that really extends pitchers. Pushes an awful lot of guys to a full count. He's ahead here 3-0 and against Bush. And there's the strike, 3-1. and Bush struck out the side in the first inning after Keishel reached with a little Texas League single out to short right field. 3-1 now to Vujovic. Bush deals. And there's ball four inside. So Vujovic draws his 28th walk of the year. Second consecutive inning, the Dons put the leadoff man on. And the batter is the right fielder, Harris Williams. Williams is up his average from the early part of the season. Up at 260 now. Three homers, 19 RBIs. In this series, he's three for eight. He's hit two doubles and a homer. He's driven in two runs. He has scored a couple of times. And he's after the first pitch and fouls it to the backstop. Strike one. Vujovic held on by Gioso at first. So the left had that hitting Williams a, a little bit bigger hole if he could ground run to right field. Lefty against lefty here. Outside, one ball, one strike. Dons 14 and 9 in the West Coast Conference. St. Mary's 10 and 13. Dons have just one series remaining after this ball game today. They'll play the Bulldogs up in Spokane. Swing and a miss by Williams. 
Dons will probably need to sweep that series if they have any hopes at all of winning the West Coast Conference. The bigger problem really for USF right now is not so much chasing Gonzaga, but trying to leapfrog past San Diego. Fly ball out towards left center, good carry. This ball is going to go all the way up to the wall. Vujovic being waved around third by Nakamura. Here's the throw offline, he's in. It's an RBI double for Williams, one nothing down. Williams with his fourth extra base hit in this series. His seventh double of the year and his 20th RBI. So he trades spots with uh, Vujovic on the base pass. Vujovic coming all the way around from first to score. And the batter is the Don's first baseman, Jacob Munoz. Munoz hitting 294. Six home runs, 34 RBIs. Ball one. Williams at second, Don's up one nothing. And that is inside and really Jam Munoz. He may have been hit. Yeah, he was hit on the, looked like maybe up around the wrist area. He tried to get out of the way of it, but really couldn't. So Munoz aboard, hit by pitch. Number 33, catcher Thomas McCarthy. Puts runners at first and second. There it is right there. It just kind of grazed him right on the, maybe the, the right wrist. Yeah, Munoz. A left-handed batter, but it got him kind of out on that right wrist area. Now we're going to have a conversation on the mound here with St. Mary's. Trying to just settle down. Kai Bush. And a walk, a double, and a hit batsman in the inning. Still nobody out. And it's the Don's catcher, Thomas McCarthy. McCarthy may be asked to bunt here with two on, nobody out. McCarthy, a 195 hitter. He has four sacrifice since for USF. That's the second most on the Dons behind Darius Foster, who has six bunts. Looking over at Troy Nakamura is McCarthy. The Gales corner infielders anticipating bunt. Santiago and Gioso both in on the grass, creeping in. And McCarthy bunts it out of play and foul. Strike one. Williams at second with Munoz at first. Munoz not being held on with Gioso more concerned with perhaps fielding a bunt from McCarthy if the bunt stays on here. He does square around. Bush is going to look Williams back into second. Portland and Pepperdine now into the bottom half of the sixth inning. A 2-2 tie. Game three of that series. McCarthy again squaring around. Bush now will come to the plate. And it's taken high. Snap throw to second. Back in with a slide is Williams. That was a bullet throw made by J.C. Santini. Count one ball, one strike to McCarthy. McCarthy again looking over at Nakamura in the third base coach's box. Flashing a whole bunch of signs. 
McCarthy again going to square and not make much secret of the fact he's trying to bunt. And this one he bunts foul. So now that puts two strikes on McCarthy. And now if you bunt again and you push it foul, you're out on strikes. So we'll see how Nino Giratano wants to play it here. The second baseman, Grime, waits next. Another left-handed batter. Gale's still thinking he might bunt here. Even with two strikes, he's not, and he swings and misses strike three. So that's the first out of the inning. And the batter is the second baseman, Brandon Grime. Grime hitting 269 with a home run and 10 RBI. It's Williams at second, Munoz at first. If you're Bush, now you could get out of the inning with a ground ball double play. Third baseman Santiago still in on the grass. Grimes swinging and fouling, strike one. Two on one out of run in. And foul to the backstop, 0-2. Oh well, Bush has retired four Dons to this point in the ball game, and he has four strikeouts. And he's ahead of Grime, 0-2. Oh he entered play with 80 strikeouts in 61 innings. Now up to 84 strikeouts for the year. Foul out of play by Grime to stay alive. Tigers edging the Broncos four to three in the top of the sixth. Two teams near the bottom of the standings in the West Coast Conference. Santa Clara seven and sixteen. Pacific three and fourteen. Grime fouls it right at home plate. I was talking earlier about, you know, really for USF, the bigger concern right now is San Diego as opposed to trying to catch Gonzaga. Gonzaga still has nine more games in the West Coast Conference. Three of those against USF. So you feel like you maybe, you know, control a bit of your own destiny. They'll need the Bulldogs to lose a couple somewhere else to have a chance to catch them. But the task to catch San Diego more difficult as Grime waits on the 0-2. Right. And it grounded to the shortstop Velasquez on to second for one. Mastoni will hold it and Mott make the throw across. So it's a fielder's choice to now put runners at the corners for USF. But, you know, San Diego right now, the Toreros are 15 and six. They only have six games remaining. They beat USF head to head, two out of three in their series, two, three weeks ago. So the Dodge need to finish in front of San Diego. In order to do that, I mean, San Diego needs to go two and four down the stretch. Now there are some other scenarios where USF could get into a, a two or a three-way three tie or even a four-way tie and maybe win a tiebreaker over San Diego. But if it's only USF and San Diego with identical records at the end, the Toreros will win the West Coast Conference. That would involve, of course, a kind of a collapse down the stretch by Gonzaga, but San Diego could have something to say about that because they play Gonzaga three times. 
Gonzaga's nine games left, a three game set on the road at Portland next weekend. Home against USF and then a series against San Diego. No, one ball, one strike now to Kieschel, who reached on a single back in the first inning, still second, was stranded there. Bats here with runners at the corners, two down, a run in. Downs in front, one nothing. Williams at third, Grime at first. Way high. And now three and one. Sorry, let's correct the count to two and one. Grime held on by the first baseman, Gioso. Outside, now it's three and one. Two outs in the inning. Gales have three defenders on the left field side, on the third base side, and Kieschel draws ball four. So that loads up the bases for Ryan Davis. Davis, there's a strikeout victim in the first inning. 0 for 1 today. A key early moment in this ball game. Down for the chance to put up a crooked number here. St. Mary's trying to keep it close at 1 0. Swing and a miss by Davis. Williams at third. Grime at second. Kieschel at first. Bags full of Dons. Bush peering in. That's outside. That's the 45th pitch thrown by Kai Bush. Count even to Davis. A strike, one and two. So Bush a strike away from getting out of this inning. And limiting the damage. The Dons have loaded up the bases here. Williams gets a walking lead off third. Grimes at second. Kieschel at first. One ball, two strikes on Davis. Outside. Two and two. The Don shortstop, Winkler waits next. Bush with four strikeouts in the game. A count even on Davis, two and two. Swing and a miss struck him out and that's five strikeouts for Kai Bush, and it stays a one-run game. The Dons leave the bases loaded. They pick up a run. We go to the third, one-nothing Dons on the WCC Network. Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about. Like our super reward checking with one of the highest interest rates in the nation. And there are no ATM or monthly service fees. Zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to ProvidenceCU.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union.
Roman Schmidt. Top half of the third inning, the Gales are at the top of the order. The leadoff man, Schmidt, then Velasquez and Banks here in the third inning. Dodds a run on two hits, no errors. St. Mary's, no runs, two hits, no errors. And a strike at the knees to Schmidt, who took a called third strike. Back in the first inning, he's 0 for 1 today. And 2 for 10 in the series. Hitting 300 for the year. Breaking ball high. And the count, one ball, one strike. Razelman now has thrown 41 pitches. Remember, he's coming off injury, so he hasn't gone super deep into ball games. The most pitches he's thrown all season, 65. So I would imagine we're going to see the USF bullpen. One of the Don's more reliable arms out of the bullpen, Alex Pham, pitched here on Friday, went two innings on Friday afternoon. Outside to Schmidt, two and two. Fam threw 26 pitches on Friday, so one would think he would be available here this afternoon. Fouled. Right at home plate. Bo Jelinek has not pitched in this series. He's a guy that could throw. And I hate to think this way, but you wonder about the Don starter yesterday, Grant Nishak. He only pitched one-third of an inning. Could he give you an inning or two here today? It kind of takes him out of his rhythm to start next Saturday. But, again, just purely guess and speculation on my part. Two balls, two strikes on Schmidt. He has a home run with four RBIs. Stands back in with a count of two and two as he leads off the third inning. Ball three. Dance baseball brought to you by Evergood Sausages. Locally made in San Francisco for 95 years. Find their hot links and their other flavors in a market near you. That's ever good sausages. They're ever good. Full count to Schmidt. And ball four. He did swing at that, but the pitch goes all the way to the backstop. So it's going to be a wild pitch that allows the runner, Schmidt, to reach, even though he struck out swinging. Nino Giratano out to talk. And now Giratano is going to come and talk to the home plate umpire, Dwayne Finley. I don't know if we can look at that again. Asking our folks up in the replay booth to help us out. You can see Giratano and Finley right at the first baseline. Here it is again. So it got away right there. You can see the Finley indicating the swing. And of course, since it got away from McCarthy, he's got to make the throw to first. Now, maybe the argument being made here by Giratano is that Going down the first base side, Schmidt wandered out of the baseline. That's the only thing I can think of. Or that the home plate umpire, maybe Finley, didn't make it clear that McCarthy had to get after that to make that throw down to first. But that's the you know kind of basic baseball rule stuff. So one would think the conversation had something to do where, with where Schmidt was running as he went down the first baseline. 
But the final result, a strikeout, and he reaches on a wild pitch. And it's ball one to the batter, Velasquez. So Razelman from the stretch. The runner, Schmidt, will be held on by Munoz. Schmidt is three for three attempting to steal bases. He goes, pitch taken outside. Throw by McCarthy, bounces past Winkler, and it's picked up by Grime and Schmidt in with the steal. Pitch taken for ball two, so 2-0 two oh now on Velasquez. He singled and stole a bag in the first inning. Runner at second, nobody out. Don's up by a run. We're in the third inning. And this is bunted out in front of home plate, picked up by Razelman, throw to first, safe. That's going to be an infield base hit. Just beating it out was Velasquez. So now the Gales have runners at the corners with nobody out. And right in the spot in the lineup where they want to be, it's the number three hitter in the order. Their leading power guy, Justin Banks. And a USF mound conversation. Gales have now out hit the Dons three to two. And so they're just trying to settle down Razelman here. It's not like he's been hit hard. I mean, he struck out Schmidt, but the pitch got away from McCarthy to allow Schmidt to reach. And then Velasquez reached on an infield bunt single. So they're not exactly roping around Razelman here, but he's still in a tough spot because you got first and third facing Justin Banks, who's driven, driven in 23 runs. Banks could drive in a run with an out here. Dons would... I would think take the double play and concede the runs if they could get Banks to ground one to a middle infielder. The middle infielders are at double play depth. Munoz holds on the trail runner, Velasquez. And the third baseman, Kieschel, creeping towards the grass. And a strike to Banks, 0-1. Banks grounded out to second back in the first inning. He's one for seven in the series. And a balk. So Razelman stepped off the rubber and balks. That means both runners advance. In to score is Schmidt. On to second is Velasquez. Boy, what an odd way for Schmidt to come around and score. He strikes out, reaches on a wild pitch, steals second, goes to third on an infield single. And then comes in to score on a balk. Where's Billy Martin? <laughs> he loved that kind of way to get runs in when he managed teams. Billy Ball. And now, of course, Velasquez in scoring position. And a swing and a miss strike two to Banks. So our ball game is evened up. Don's one, Gale's one. In the third inning here on the Hilltop. Kind of a slow moving ball game so far. Swing and a miss, struck him out. 
And that brings up the center fielder, Mann. Center fielder, Blake Mann. Man 0 for 1, grounded out to third in the first inning. But he's had a good series. Three for six here this weekend against USF. It's with one out and a runner in scoring position. Gale scoring the run on the balk. Outside. There's a breaking ball, 1 and 0. Oh. Swing and a miss, one and one. Man hitting 256. He's homered four times. He's driven in 23 runs. That's tied with Banks for most on the club for the Gales. Under second year head coach Greg Moore. Moore is 129 and lost 29 with St. Mary's. Eight and eight a year ago before. The season was shortened by COVID, and this year, the Gales 21 and 21 overall. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Man was way out in front. One and two. The runner at second, Velasquez, reached in an infield single, and then advanced along to second on the balk. And that call put Schmidt. Across on plate, he was standing at third when the ball came. 1-1. One, one. Outside, runner goes, gets away from McCarthy. And into third is Velasquez. So now you could play to run with an out. Two balls, two strikes. Called a wild pitch that advances Velasquez. Fastball fouled. Count of two and two. Two balls, two strikes, and out. A run in. St. Mary's could score with something to the outfield here. The Dons have the infield drawn in with a runner at third in a 1-1 game. Way up high. And so the count now full to man with Mistoni waiting next. Sixty pitches thrown now by Razelman. The most he's thrown in a ball game this year is sixty-five. Ball four. So the Gales with two on, one out, and it's the second baseman, Mistoni. And here comes Dino Giratano. And I would think at this stage, the number of pitches thrown by Razelman that we're going to see a pitching change, and we will. So a right-hander will come in from out of the bullpen. 
Razelman working into the third inning today. And the game tied 1-1 as we have a break in the action. And we'll tell you about the new arm in just a moment right here on the WCC Network. All right, the new pitcher in for USF out of the bullpen is a right-hander, Bo Jelinek, making his 11th appearance. He's pitched 14 and two-thirds innings, allowing 10 hits, five runs, four earned runs with five walks and 11 strikeouts, and he throws over to first base. Jelinek has been rock solid. Opponents hitting just 204 against him. A record of 1-0 and, oh and a 2.45 earned run average. He inherits a first and third one-out situation, a swing and a foul by Mastoni. And strike one. Mastoni 0 for 1 today. 2 for 9 in the series. Mastoni hitting 238 for the year. Jelinek last pitch last weekend in Stockton at Pacific. Went two and one third innings. Had three strikeouts, did not give up a run. That was in the Friday ball game, a game the Dons eventually lost in extra innings. Against Portland here a couple of weeks ago, he pitched two innings. I was in the first game of that series. Or no, in the second game of the series, gave up a run. It was earned, walked one, struck out one. Throw to first and back in safely as man. That was a heck of a throw over that time by Jelinek. One ball, one strike to Mistoni. The runner at third is Velasquez. At first, it's Mann. A run in. We're tied 1-1. One, one. one out in the inning. That count you're looking at on our Chiron is not accurate. It's not three and two. It's one ball, one strike to the batter, Mastoni. There you go. And a fly ball punched out to shallow right field. Moving in, making the catch as Williams on the line. Throw to the plate is a rocket. 
and no advance at all for Velasquez. Boy, what an arm by Williams. He just threw a, a line drive to home plate. And he had to catch that on the move. Somehow he stopped planted. Let's take a look. I mean, he's going full speed, catches it right there, stops on a dime, and throws a bullet to McCarthy. What a play by Williams. That ball was actually caught in foul territory. Two outs in the inning. And it's the first baseman, Gioso. Gioso 0 for 1, grounded to third. In the series, he's 1 for 9. Hitting 209 for the year. Runner at first goes, and McCarthy has to eat it. And so that's a stolen base. Man was getting ready to walk back to first base. Maybe he thought that was hit for a foul ball, but now he's in there with the steal. So the Gales now have runners at second and third with two outs. And a ball and no strike count on Gioso. Man with his second steal of the season. Jelinek ready, breaking ball low, gets away from McCarthy, but no advance for either runner. Don's Baseball brought to you by Arguello Market. Hey, Don's fans, check out Arguello Market right near the USF campus at Arguello and Cabrillo, serving the best fresh roasted turkey sandwich in the city at Arguello Market. Two balls, no strikes to Gioso. Been a long top half of the third inning here. Strike call. So the count now two and one to Gioso. Velasquez at third, man at second. Two down. Jelinek peering in. Way high. This is going to get away from McCarthy, but unable to advance at third is Velasquez. And now the count goes to three and one. So you're a pitch away from loading them up. The left fielder Ellis waiting next. He is singled in this ball game, and he has four hits in the series. The hottest St. Mary's hitter waiting in the on deck circle. Strike right at the knees. And now it's a full count to Gioso. With runners at second and third. In this series, St. Mary's has done all its scoring in the first three innings. We're in the third here. The Gales have played it a run looking for more. Ball four. Boy, just a bit inside. Good eye by Gioso. So he's aboard. And kind of a strange inning here in the sense that St. Mary's really hasn't hit the ball much. Schmidt, the leadoff man, struck out, but the pitch got away from McCarthy on a wild pitch. Schmidt reaching. Then an infield bunt single. After a strikeout, a walk and a walk. So St. Mary's hasn't hit the ball out of the infield. Yet they have them loaded for their hottest hitter in Ellis. 
And Ellis fouls the first pitch out of play, strike one. Gioso at first, Mann at second, Velasquez at third. Don's outfield straight away for Ellis. One for one today. Four for eight in the series. Way outside. One ball, one strike. Don's one, Gale's one. We're in the third inning. Pacific in front of Santa Clara now. Six to three in the top of the seventh. The Tigers trying to win their first West Coast Conference series this year. They're three and 14 in the league, 12 and 27 overall. One ball, one strikes to Ellis, one and two, swing and a miss. So Jelinek now a strike away from getting out of the inning. Portland with a four run sixth inning leading Pepperdine six to two. That's now in the bottom half of the eighth. The Pilots in fourth place. That's a bit outside. Portland's going to have a lot to say about how the West Coast Conference finishes. Because the Portlands have, the Pilots have a, a, a series against San Diego and a series against Gonzaga remaining. The first and second place team. Inside, count full. No room at all for Ellis. The bases are loaded. So 3-2 count with the bags full. Velasquez at third, Mann at second, Gioso at first. Ellis, a 237 hitter. Has 14 walks this year. And it's fouled out of play. Runners, of course, on the move with the count full. They'd all get a running start. If Ellis finds a gap, three runs will score. And the base hit to the outfield will deliver two runs here with the runners on the move. Gales a run on three hits. The Dons a run on two hits. There's the pitch from Jelinek. Swing and a miss struck him out. So the Gales leave him loaded. And we go to the home half of the third. Ball game tied 1-1 on the WCC Network. If you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet, mix, and spark. Eyes open. Doors open. It's real. You can feel it. You can be a part of it. And you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit. Bottom half of the third inning, the USF Dons in the 
meat part of the lineup, the heart of the order. The number three hitter, the shortstop Winkler, the cleanup man Westerman, and then the D.H. Vujovic. Ball game tied 1-1. Each team has left the bases loaded. As Winkler fouls the first pitch out of play. Winkler 0 for 1, a strikeout back in the first inning. The Dons left him loaded in the second. The Gales left him loaded in the top of the third. Outside to Winkler, did he go around? He did not as they check with the first base umpire, Mike Lusky. One ball, one strike on Winkler. a strike now two and two on Winkler same two teams will play again tomorrow in Moraga at three o'clock tomorrow's game is a non-conference game so in essence this here today is the rubber match of this three game WCC series They'll play tomorrow in the non-conference contest in Moraga. Uh, we're told tomorrow will be a battle of bullpens. And now the count rides full to Winkler leading off the Don's third inning. Winkler hitting 293. <laughs> Foul out of play. Grounded foul. Count stays full. Bush is pitch count now into the mid 50s. Ball four. Missed just a bit outside. So Winkler draws the leadoff walk here in the third inning. The batter is Jacob Westerman. Don's Baseball brought to you by Private Credit Union. Hey, Don's fans, do you want a free checking account that actually pays you? Well, Private Credit Union's super reward checking pays you dividends and features absolutely no fees. Visit ProvidenceCU.org for details. That's Provident. CU.org, Provident Credit Union, a proud sponsor of USF Athletics. Winkler being held on by Gioso. And Westerman looks at ball one. Westerman was out with a swinging third strike in the first inning. That was when Bush struck out the side. Winkler has 16 steals in 19 tries. A strike at the knees to Westerman, one and one. Westerman hitting 280. He has four home runs. And he's driven in 19. Oh, 
Westerman one for six in the series. Winkler going, but it's swung on and fouled. So back to first goes Winkler. The count now one and two on Westerman. Westerman goes around, tried to hold up his swing, but unable to do so. Swing and a miss, strike three. And the batter is the DH, Jordan Vujovic. Vujovic walked and scored in the second inning. Bujovic, one for two in the series. With a walk, Winkler going. This goes all the way to the backstop. So Winkler is in with his 17th steal of the year. No chance for a throw at all. So Winkler into scoring position with just the one out. Winkler 17 for 20 on the base paths. One ball, no strikes to Vujovic. One and one to Vujovic. Kai Bush is now throwing 63 pitches. We're in the third inning. It's a ball game that's really labored along. We have played an hour and a half, and we're still just in the bottom half of the third. Strike to Vujovic, one and two. Side, two balls, two strikes now on Vujovic. Vujovic drew his 28th walk back in the second inning, by far the most for USF. Jacob Munoz next has drawn 20 base on balls. Actually, Foster, Foster with 21, and then Munoz with 20. Now Munoz drew one in this ball game, so they're even at 21. We'll. Get that all straightened out. Actually, was hit by a pitch, Munoz, to reach. And fly ball, center field. Back to make the catch is Mann. Tagging at second, Winkler goes to third. He's in with two outs. And the batter is the Don's right fielder, Harris Williams. Right fielder, Harris Williams. Williams smacked an RBI double his last time up off Bush. A lefty-lefty matchup here with Winkler 90 feet away. Swing and a miss, strike one. Good. 
Foul to the backstop. 0 oh and 2 now on Williams. Dodds won, Gales won in the third inning. Williams is averaged now up to 268 for the season. Outside. One ball, two strikes. Williams in this series is four for nine. Two and two outside. All four of his hits have been extra base hits. Williams has three doubles and a home run in this series and he's driven in three runs he's driven in 20 for the year fouled out of play Two pitch. Strike three call. So the Don Strand Winkler at third. We go to the fourth inning. It's a 1 1 ball game on the WCC network. Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about. Like our super reward checking with one of the highest interest rates in the nation. And there are no ATM or monthly service fees. Zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to ProvidenceCU.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union. Ryan Davis moves from center field to left field. Thank you. Getting off the fourth for St. Mary's. Well, we move along now to the fourth inning. The Dons have made a change defensively. Nick Jovetic is the new USF center fielder. As this one is roped deep to left field and a home run. So a leadoff home run here. In the fourth inning, it's two to one Gales. Smacked by the third baseman, Santiago. I'm trying to tell you about the John's new defensive alignment. And Santiago was not going to give me time to do that after the first pitch and a home run. Two to one St. Mary's. There is a look at it again. And Santiago gave it a ride. The new left fielder, Davis. Davis moves over from center. Jovetic entering into Westerman's spot in the lineup, so Westerman is out of the ball game. So that means Jovetic is now hitting in the cleanup spot. <laughs> Two to one St. Mary's after the home run by Santiago, the batter now Santini. And it's one ball, one strike to Santini. 
Portland has knocked out Pepperdine 6-2. Bradley McVeigh picks up the win for the Pilots. So Portland moves to 13 and 8. And for the moment, tied with USF in third place. Both teams five games above 500. USF 14 and 9, Portland 13 and 8. has gone full now to the number nine hitter and he pops it up foul this should wander out of play it does Portland to 21 and 21 overall with the win and the Pilots continue to maintain pace. They're going to have a lot to say about how the West Coast Conference chase finishes out. Pilots still have a three-game series at home against Gonzaga and a three-game series on the road against San Diego. They have to feel like if they finish strong, they could win the WCC outright. Line drive, right field, base hit. So Santini aboard with nobody out. And it's around to the top of the lineup for the leadoff man. And they visit from the dugout by Nino Giratano, and he's going to go get Bo Jelinek and make a call to the bullpen. A break in the action. We're in the fourth inning with the Gales in front 2-1 to one, and a pitching change on the WCC Network.
New pitcher for the USF Dons out of the bullpen, a right-hander, Jesse Barron. We might see Barron a bit deeper later in ball games, but he'll make his 19th appearance. He has four saves. We're a little bit earlier talk about that stat. And a two-to-one ball game in the fourth inning. Barron has pitched 25 and a third, 22 hits allowed with 18 walks. He's given up 14 runs, 11 earned runs, a record of two wins, two losses, a 3.91 earned run average. And he's ahead of Schmidt, 0 and 2, the leadoff man. Pacific has really opened up. A big lead against Santa Clara, now 11-3 in the bottom of the eighth. A little bit high, one and two. To Schmidt. Schmidt's 0 for 2, a pair of strikeouts. Although the second strikeout, he reached on a wild pitch and eventually scored. Hitting 294 for the year. Fly ball center field. Jovetic. He'll make the catch. Backing up a few steps. No advance for Santini. One out. Shortstop Kyle Velasquez. Brings up the shortstop Velasquez. Velasquez two for two today, a couple of hits in the ball game. In the series, four for nine. With two doubles and two RBIs. He takes a strike, 0 and 1. And bunted foul, 0 and 2. <laughs> St. Mary's, two runs, five hits, no errors. USF, a run on two hits, no errors. And with Portland having just one, just more pressure on USF in a situation where the Dons really need to win today. Especially if they have any hopes of trying to catch San Diego. San Diego with six losses. The Dons have nine defeats. The Dons need San Diego to get to ten losses. And the Dons can't lose again to finish in front of San Diego. There's also Gonzaga to contend with. The Bulldogs are 14 and 4. Fly ball out towards right field. Williams coming in, and he's got it. Two down. Brings up the D.H. Banks. Banks 0 for 2, a ground out, a strikeout. Designated hitter, Justin So right now you have Gonzaga at 14 and 4. San Diego 15 and 6. USF and Portland... And a virtual third place tie for the moment. The Pilots 13 and 8, the Dons 14 and 9. BYU in fifth, 11 and 10. Then St. Mary's and LMU in a virtual tie. St. Mary's 10 and 13, LMU 9 and 12. Pepperdine with the loss, 7 and 11. Santa Clara 7 and 16. And Pacific. 3 and 14 pending their ball game which is now in the 8th inning with the Tigers in control up 11 to 3 one ball one strike to Banks 
Line drive right field, base hit on a bounce to Williams. That's hit so sharply that Santini holds it second. Banks hit that on the line. So first and second for the center fielder, the cleanup man, Blake Mann. Man 0 for 1 with a walk today. Hitting 256. So a two out opportunity here for St. Mary's with runners at first and second and two down. Strike. 0 oh and 1. Strike two. 0 oh and two now on man. Man, a 229 hitter with two outs in the inning. He hits 235 with runners on the base paths. He's got two aboard here with two down. Santini at second, Banks at first. And the count now one and two on man. Way outside. And the count now even. Two balls, two strikes with two outs, a run in. We're in the top half of the four. Slow moving ball game here today on the Hilltop. These two teams played pretty crisply on both Friday and Saturday. Friday, the Dons won in a. Nifty, two hours and 38 minutes, swing, and a miss struck him out. And that'll do it for St. Mary's. The Dons won yesterday in two hours and 32 minutes. We'll go to the home half of the fourth, two to one Gales on the WCC Network. If you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus, in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet, mix, and spark. Eyes open. Doors open. It's real. You can feel it. You can be a part of it. And you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit. Hitting off the bottom of the fourth inning for San Francisco. First baseman, Kika Munoz. All right, we move along now to the bottom half of the fourth inning for the Dons. It's the first baseman, Munoz, then 
the catcher McCarthy in the second baseman Grime, the seven, eight, and nine spots in the order. No balls, two strikes on Munoz. Lefty against lefty here and outside, one and two. Swing and a miss struck him out. One out in the inning and the batter is the Don's catcher, Thomas McCarthy. McCarthy 0 for 1, a strikeout victim. He pops the first pitch foul. Bit outside to McCarthy. And the count, one ball, one strike. McCarthy hitting 192 for the season. He has a home run. He's driven in four runs. And now two and one. St. Mary's a couple of runs on six hits, no errors. The Dons a run on two hits and no errors. The rubber game of this West Coast Conference series. Swing and a miss, two and two. Dons need a win to maintain pace with the Pilots who have won. Dons right now in a virtual tie with Portland. And of course trying to keep pace with San Diego and Gonzaga. Up the middle, and it's going to go off the glove of Bush over to the shortstop, Velasquez, and he makes the play. So deflected, the putout will go 1-6-3. If Bush doesn't slow that down with the little deflection off his glove, that's probably on into center field and a base hit. So with two down, the batter is the second baseman, Grime. Grime reached on a fielder's choice in the second inning. He's 0 for 1 today. Hitting 265 and a swing and a foul. Same two teams tomorrow in Moraga, 3 o'clock. A game that will not be a part of the WCC standing. Little soft fly ball, shallow left field and a base hit. That was in no man's land between Velasquez and Ellis. And so Grime a two out single. Around to the top of the lineup now for the leadoff man, Kieschel. Kieschel has reached twice today. He has singled and walked. Third baseman, Luke Kieschel. In the series, he is two for eight. With a walk and a hit by pitch. He's been on four times here on the weekend. Hitting 327. Throw to first, grind back in. He'll be held on there by Gioso. They've now gone to the ninth inning in Santa Clara, still 11-3 Tigers. Pacific trying to win its first WCC series this season.
One ball, no strikes to Kieschel. Bush, the lefty. He's taking a long look at Grime. And punched towards the USF dugout out of play, or the bullpen, I should say. And that gets out of range. One ball, one strike. Grime again getting his lead. Grime does not have a stolen base this year. He has not attempted a steal. Ground ball slowly hit towards right field. That's going to be a base hit. The alignment for Kieschel, they have all three infielders on the left side of the diamond. That was hit right at where the second baseman would normally play. But the second baseman, Mistoni, more towards the shortstop position, had to race over. He was able to run it down, but by the time he got to it, Keisha was already crossing first base. We'll look at it again here, and you can see that's grounded right at the normal spot for the second baseman, Mistoni. He was able to dive and get to it, but no play. It's an infield single. Gales have done that a lot here this weekend against some of the Don's right-handed hitters. Westerman has seen that alignment. Kieschel has seen it. Winkler has looked at that type of alignment as well. And so now here's Ryan Davis with two on, two out. Davis came up in a similar situation back in the second inning when he came up with two men out, although the bases were loaded then. And he ended up striking out. The Don's trying to get a little two-out rally going here. No balls and a strike on Davis. Lefty-lefty matchup, 0-2. Davis 0 for 2 with two strikeouts. St. Mary's in front, 2-1, to one, fourth inning. Ball one. It's Grime at second, Keishel at first. One ball, two strikes on Davis with two down. Outside, count four. Goes to two and two. The shortstop Winkler waits next. Base hit to the outfield would tie the ball game. Gales about hit the Don six to four. Fly ball out towards right center. This could drop. It's in there for a base hit. Racing around third to score is Grime. We're tied. A little looper that fell in. An RBI for Davis. His 14th of the year. A look again. You can see that was in no man's land. Between the second baseman, Mistoni, the third, the uh, center fielder, man. And the right fielder, Schmidt. And now Winkler stands in. We're tied. Jack Winkler. Davis is 14th RBI of the year. And now there's going to be a meeting on the mound with the left-hander, Bush. Still just in the fourth inning. Bush has thrown 91 pitches so far. Here he's going to face a right-hander if they keep him in. And it looks like there's no change. So it'll be Winkler 
against the left-hander Bush. Gales two runs, six hits. Don's two runs, five hits. St. Mary's just now sending down a couple guys to the bullpen. So we're going to get some action down there. In fact, going down there at a full trot was a left-handed sophomore, Ryan Sanders. Outside to Winkler. Still runners at first and second. At second is Kieschel. At first is Davis. Dons have a run in. Two outs in the inning. One ball, no strikes to Winkler, who's 0 for 1. A strikeout and a walk. Hitting 293. Strike on the outside corner, one and one. Strike two. One and two. Two men on, a run in. The Davis Bloop RBI single. Dons will take it. A bit low to Winkler, two and two. Bush now at 95 pitches thrown. Peers into Santini. Winkler facing that alignment. Three infielders on the left side of the diamond. Pop foul out of play. You got the third baseman Santiago almost right on the bag. The shortstop Velasquez pulled way around deep in the hole at short. And the second baseman, Mistoni, is just to the left of the second base bag. You can see him in your camera shot there wearing number five. That's the second baseman positioned more towards the shortstop position. Big hole on the right side for Winkler. And ball three. Three and two. I would imagine if Bush loses Winkler, we might see a pitching change, although the left-handed pitching Bush does have a left-hander up next. In fact, stacked behind Winkler, you have Jovetic, who came on as part of a defensive change, a left-handed hitter. Vujovic, Williams, and Munoz, all left-handed batters. Of course, you could bring in another lefty with the left-handed hitters all stacked in the lineup. Three balls, two strikes to Winkler. Runners go, and there's ball four. So the bases are loaded. And Bush is now throwing 98 pitches. Will face Jovetic. Jovetic came on as part of a defensive change. So it's his first at bat today. He's hitting 223 for the season with two homers, 20 RBIs. Big chance to get USF a crooked number here in this inning. And a swing and a miss by Jovetic, strike one. Jovetic, one for eight in the series. It's a lefty-lefty matchup here. Strike two called. 
Oh, and two to Jovicic. Outside, count goes to one and two. Just a reminder, Diamond Dodge Baseball brought to you by San Francisco Toyota. With two sales, two service locations in the city. Proudly serving San Francisco since 1966. One ball, two strikes with the bases loaded. Grime bluffing down third. And Jovetic watches that one sail outside. I said, Grind, that's Keishel that's coming down third. Looked like he had a mindset maybe to think about stealing home. He came sprinting down and suddenly stopped his run. Keishel at third. Davis at second. Winkler on at first. One run in. Line drive left field. It's got Carey going towards the corner and up against the wall. Keishel in. They're waving Davis around. He scores. Here comes Winkler. A slide safe. Jovetic going for third. He's out, but not before he drives in three runs with the double to the left field corner. And it's five to two dots as we go to the fifth inning. On the WCC Network, a look at it again as this goes up against the wall. One run in. Here comes two runs. There's three. The slide by Winkler. And then Jovetic out at third. The Dons lead it. It's a 5-2 to two ball game as we go to the fifth inning on the WCC Network. Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about. Like our super reward checking with one of the highest interest rates in the nation. And there are no ATM or monthly service fees. Zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to ProvidenceCU.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union. Well, the USF Dons with a four-run fourth inning have taken a 5-2 to two lead over St. Mary's into the fifth inning. The three-run double from Jovetic is now driv driven in 23 runs for the year. The out on Jovetic is he tried to go to third, 7-6-2-5. But the third run was across before Jovetic was tagged. So he's got a three-run double. The Dons have a 5-2 to two lead. It'll be Mastoni, Gioso, and Ellis for the Gales here in the fifth inning. Outside, 2-1. and one. Mastoni is 0 for 2. He has skied out tri tw twice to right field, once in fair ground, once in foul ground. Both tracked down by Williams. Grounded right back to Barron. He will underhand it over to Munoz. One out. First baseman, Gabe Gioso. Brings up the first baseman, Gabe Gioso. Out. 
That Pacific and Santa Clara game has gone final at Stephen Schott Stadium. The Tigers win it 11 to three, and thus they win their first WCC series of the year. One ball, two strikes now on Gioso. The Tigers in that ball game. 11 runs, 14 hits, two errors. Eight runners left on for the Broncos. Three runs, eight hits, two errors, nine left on the base pass. Pacific goes to four and 14. And the Broncos drop to 7-17 seven and 17 in West Coast Conference play. Two balls, two strikes on Gioso. And up the middle and a base hit. Brings up Ellis, the left fielder, who's one for two. Left fielder, Ryan Ellis. Ellis hitting 244. Gioso will be held on by Munoz. And a ground ball to Munoz. He'll go to second. Winkler back to first to Barron. Not in time. So they get the lead runner. No double play. 3-6 on the fielder's choice. Gioso erased off the base pass, and the batter is Santiago, who hit a booming home run his last time up. Dons with five runs on six hits. St. Mary's two runs on seven hits. We're in the fifth inning. Dons trying to win the West Coast Conference part of this series. The series will continue tomorrow with a fourth game. But tomorrow's ball game, not part of WCC play. Dons, if they can hang on, we got a lot of ball game in front of us. Would go to 15 and nine, which would put them a game and a half behind second place San Diego. But they would trail the Toreros by three in the loss column. Again, the Toreros beat USF two games to one in a head-to-head -head series. The Dons can't finish in a tie with San Diego, at least not be tied only with San Diego. But there's some other teams involved. And the Dons would have a chance at a tie break. Best scenario in a three-way tie is for USF to sweep Gonzaga. End up in a three-way tie with Gonzaga in San Diego and have the best record amongst the three at four and two. They would need San Diego and Gonzaga to beat up each other a little bit in that kind of situation. But first, you got to take care of business here today, and then you got to go win in Spokane. So as they like to say in the coaching world, one game at a time. The Don's got to get through this one. One and two on Santiago with two down. Barron throws to first, and he's got him picked off, but he threw it right past Munoz. He had him dead to rights. That's going to be an error on either Munoz or Barron. The error is on Barron. An errant pickoff throw. That sends Ellis into scoring position here with two down. Did he go around? He did. That's a swing and a miss. Strike three. 
So the air does not haunt the nuns. We are midway through our ball game. We go to the home half of the fifth inning. Five to two Dons on the WCC Network. Bottom half of the fifth inning, new pitcher on for St. Mary's out of the bullpen, a right-hander. It's a six-foot, one-inch redshirt junior from El Cajon, Jackson Hewlett. Hewlett making his 15th appearance. Every appearance has been from the bullpen for Hewlett. Hewlett. Hewlett has pitched 14 and two-thirds. He's allowed eight hits, four runs. All four have been earned. Opponents hitting just 167 against Hewlett. A record of 1-0 and oh, and a 2.45 earned run average. 2-0 and oh to the Don's D.H. Vujovic, who grounds one foul. Vujovic hitting 202. He is walked and skied out to center field, 0 for 1. 2 1 pitch. That's a strike right at the letters, two and two. Ball three to Vujovic. In 14 innings, Hewlett has walked seven. Here's the three-two. Swing and a miss struck him out. The batter now is the right fielder, Harris Williams. Williams one for two, a double and a strikeout. Strike one. Williams hitting 265. Ground ball, foul. 0 oh and 2.
upstairs for a ball, one and two. One, two on the way. Strike three call. Two outs, the batter is Munoz. Diamond Dance Baseball brought to you by Able Services, America's largest owned provider of janitorial engineering and facility solutions, Able Services, a proud sponsor of USF Athletics. So Munoz standing in with two down, the base is empty. Munoz 0 for 1. He was hit by a pitch in the second inning. And then a swinging strikeout victim in the fourth. Munoz now down to 292. He's been in a little bit of a slump in recent ball games. Back did not get the start here yesterday afternoon. And a bit deeper down in the lineup today, down at number seven in the order. And he's down 0 2 in the count. Hewlett trying to strike out the side here. High. One and two. Munoz with six home runs, 34 RBIs, which is tops on the club. One, two. Fouled out of play. Stays one and two. Everything else has gone final. Portland with a series win over Pepperdine. Munoz hits one deep right field. This has got some carry and it's gonna come in off the screen. Munoz chugging for second, he's there, he is out. So it's a single from Munoz and then he's thrown out trying to stretch it into a double. We will go to the sixth inning it is five to two Dons on the WCC network. Bottom of the fifth inning for San Francisco, no runs. One hit, no errors, no runners left on base. Five full innings of play. The sixth inning for St. Mary's. Catcher J.C. Santini. Top half of the sixth inning for the Gales. It'll be the catcher Santini. And then around to the top of the order for Schmidt and Velasquez. That play, by the way, that ended the Don's half of the fifth inning, Munoz with the single off the screen. He was thrown out at second, 9-6 on the put out. So it's a single from Munoz and then the inning ends. 
One ball, one strike here to Santini in the sixth inning. One and two as he took strike two. Santini is one for two in the series, one for eight. Two balls, two strikes now to Santini. Strike three call. Right fielder, Coleman Schmidt. And around to the top of the order for the right fielder, Coleman Schmidt. Schmidt is 0 for 3 today. Hitting 288 for the season. First pitch, foul. We're back with you again this coming Friday. We'll bringing you, be bringing you game one of a four-game series as the Dons go out of conference against Sacramento State. They'll play home here on Friday. A doubleheader Saturday up in Sacramento. And then a single game again on Sunday. So we'll bring you the two home ball games here on the WCC Network. Friday and Sunday broadcasts as the Dons go non-conference against Sacramento State for a four-game set. Friday afternoon ball game will come along at 3 p.m. and then for the Sunday finale, 1 p.m. One ball, two strikes to Schmidt. Barron still on the hill for USF. Swing and a miss struck him out. Now check it, that was just strike two. I guess it was a foul tip and not held on by McCarthy. So staying alive is Schmidt as he just got a piece of it. I thought he had swung through it. Here's the one, two. Swing and a foul, so Schmidt remains alive. Same two teams tomorrow in Moraga. Again, tomorrow's game is not part of West Coast Conference play. We're told tomorrow is a bullpen day. Foul to the backstop. And the count one and two. Barron has thrown 35 pitches out of the bullpen. He has three strikeouts. And he's in front of Schmidt, one and two. Out of play foul. Up high with the one-two, now two and two. Portland is one. Pacific is one today. San Diego and BYU wrapping up their series yesterday. San Diego won with a four-run ninth inning. Swing and a foul. Boy, Schmidt is really hanging in there. Spoiling off pitches. He's having a heck of an at bat here. Yeah. Out 
side, count full now. Don's five runs on seven hits. St. Mary's two runs on seven hits. Don's won on Friday, five to four. Gales won yesterday, six to four. <laughs> Foul out of play again. Corner base hit all the way to the wall. Around first, going into second. It's a stand up double for Schmidt. And he had one heck of an at bat. He just kept fouling off pitches until he got something he could get into. It's a one out double. Brings up the shortstop, Velasquez. Shortstop, Kyle Velasquez. He smacked it, not able to get to it there was Kieschel, who gave it a dive at third. That was an 11 pitch at bat, by the way, for Schmidt. On the 11th pitch, he doubled. Foul ball, Velasquez 0-1. Gales have now out hit the Dons 8-7. But USF in front 5-2. One ball, one strike down to Velasquez. Swing and a miss, one and two. Velasquez at 276 for the year, two for three today, four for ten in the series. High, two and two. Barron's thrown 50 pitches out of the bullpen. He will probably not be the final arm of the day. We're still just in the sixth inning. Very slow moving ball game on the hilltop. Swing and a miss struck him out. No advance for Schmidt. As McCarthy had to make the throw to first, it got away from him. That's now four strikeouts for Barron. His season best is five strikeouts. Designated hitter Justin Banks. In a game against Cal Berkeley earlier in the year. Actually, that was last year against Cal, March 8th of 2020. That Barron had five strikeouts in a ball game. He's got four. Matches his season best. He had four strikeouts twice earlier this year. Once against Stanford on March 7th in a two and two thirds outing. And then four strikeouts against BYU in two and one third back on March 26th. One ball, no strikes to the DH Banks. 
And now one and one on Banks. Banks is one for three, a ground out, a strikeout, a single. Ground ball foul, one and two. Now he's in position to possibly strike out Banks. Banks, a guy that will strike out a lot. He has 49 strikeouts for the year, including one earlier in this ball game. Runner at second is Schmidt, two outs in the inning. One and two on Banks. Outside, two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Pitch on the way is low and in. Count full. Well, if Banks gets aboard, the Gales would bring the potential tying run to home plate. It would be their cleanup man. Blake Mann waits next. Need to give the Gales any sense they can start climbing right back in this year. It's five to two ball game. High sky fly ball center field. Jovetic there, he's got it. And we go on to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Five to two Dons on the WCC Network. The sixth inning for St. Mary's, no if you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet mix and spark eyes open doors open it's real you can feel it you can be a part of it and you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit Bottom of the sixth inning for San Francisco. Catcher Thomas McCarthy. Bottom half of the sixth inning, the Dons have the catcher McCarthy, <laughs> the number eight hitter in the order. Then the second baseman Grime and the third baseman Kieschel against the right handed throwing. Hewlett. McCarthy's 0 for 2, and he sends one out into shallow right field. That's going to drop in for a base hit. So a leadoff single from McCarthy here in the sixth inning. We have a pinch runner at first base. The pinch runner will be Kyle Nell. San Francisco running at first base for McCarthy. Number four, Kyle Nell. And the batter is Grime. Hey, 
Try maybe asked to lay down a bun here. Chance for the Dons to pick up an insurance run. Move Nell 90 feet along. The Gales anticipating that have their corner fielders coming in and Grime was not squaring. He takes ball one. Grime is one for two today. Hitting 275 for the season. And there's a strike. One ball, one strike. Now Grime does square to bunt and a throw to first, and it is caught with a leap by the first baseman, Gioso. Grime back in. Squaring to bunt. And he takes strike two. That was a pretty tough pitch to bunt right on the outside corner. So now the bunt probably pulled off with two strikes. And outside. Two and two to Grime. Nell bluffed that time, didn't go. He took a step or two. Nell's two for four on the base paths. And now the count full to Grime, three and two. Well, how many full counts have we had here today? It's been that kind of ball game. It seems like we've been three and two almost every batter. Not really quite the case, but there have been a number of full counts today and a good number of strikeouts on both sides. High and foul. And out of play. Nell was on the move. There's nobody out. But he still got sent with the count three and two. Grime again stands in. He's hit one home run. He's driven in ten. And that is smacked out into center, but right at the center fielder, man. Nell, who was on the move, scoots back to first base. Went out and around to the top of the order for Luke Kieschel. Kieschel has reached all three times, a single, a walk, and a single. He has scored a run. Has his average up to 331 for the season. The runner at first base is Nell. High to Kieschel, 1-0. We're in the bottom half of the sixth inning. We are approaching the three hour mark of our ball game. Ball two.
Strike on the inside corner. Two and one now. Throw to first and back in is Nell. Kieschel scored his 30th run in the fourth inning. That's second most for USF. Winkler has scored 36 runs. Darius Foster next. He has 29. He scored the third most. Runner goes. And that was a swing and a foul. Two and two. Line drive right at the shortstop, Velasquez, and Nell was on the move. He's doubled off. 6-3 double play brings an end to the sixth inning. We go to the late innings. 5-2 to two Dons on the WCC Network. Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about, like our super reward checking with one of the highest interest rates in the nation. And there are no ATM or monthly service fees, zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to ProvidenceCU.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union. Top half of the seventh inning, the Gales in the middle of the lineup. It's the number four hitter, the cleanup man, Blake Mann, then Mistoni and Gioso here in the seventh inning. First pitch, line drive, right field, base hit. So the Gales with the leadoff man aboard, the batter is Mistoni. Second baseman, Nick Mistoni. Mistoni is 0 for 3. A fly out, a foul out, a ground out. At 232 for the season. Man is 1 for 4 on the base pass and strike 1 to Mistoni. Gales about hit USF nine to eight today. Swing and a miss, strike two. Yeah. 
He tried to check his swing and did not. So Mastoni goes around. And that's the first out of the inning. Brings up the first baseman, Gioso, who's one for two with a walk. Gioso in the series is two for ten. Man at first base still being held on by Munoz, and there's a strike from Barron. Barron's now thrown 62 pitches out of the bullpen. I think that's the, the definition of... Long middle relief. A 62 pitch outing. He's gone three and a third. Fished it out of play. By the way, the strikeout of Mistoni is now matches a career high for Barron. Five strikeouts. He did that last year in a game against Cal. And he's ahead now of Gioso 0 and 2. And that's a little low, one and two. The breeze kicking in a little bit here. We said earlier that it was predicted to be a little bit windy in the afternoon as this is up high for a ball. Our game time temperature at first pitch was 73 degrees today. Right now it's down to 70, but the wind right now at 19 miles an hour from the west. And that's inside and hit him. Well, the last thing you need to do is start putting guys on when you got a three-run lead, but now the Gales bring the tying run to home play. Left fielder Ryan Ellis. He went ahead of Gio, so 0 and 2 and hit him. So here's Ellis now. The potential tying run. Gales have had runners on in every inning. There has not been a single 1-2-3 inning today for USF pitching. Gales put run on in the first. They had two runners on in the second. They scored a run and loaded the bases in the third. After a home run, they had two on in the fourth. A runner on in the fifth, one on in the sixth, and two on here in the seventh. And one ball, one strike to Ellis. Double play gets you out of the inning here. Middle infielders at double play depth. Ellis probably not an easy guy to double up though. He's got some pretty good speed. One ball, one strike with one out. And a swing and a miss, one and two. Swing and a miss, struck him out. And that's the sixth strikeout for Barron. It's a new career high in a USF uniform. Third baseman, Chris Santiago. Brings up the third baseman, Santiago. Santiago is one for two with a walk, but the one hit was a home run. If he does that here, we got a tie ball game. Two on with two outs. Five to two, Don's in the seventh. Strike. Oh. 
Oh, one pitch. Ground ball, two second. To his left is Grime over to Munoz. And the Gales leave two on. Seventh inning stretch time at the ballpark. It's five to two Dons on the WCC Network. off the bottom of the seventh inning for San Francisco. Left fielder, Ryan Davis. Bottom half of the seventh inning here at the ballpark. The Dons in front five to two in the seventh have Davis, Winkler, and Jovetich, the two, three, four hitters. Against the right-hander, the reliever Hewlett. One ball, one strike to Davis, who's one for three. Hitting 235 for the season. A pair of strikeouts. And then the bloop RBI single. It was part of that four-run fourth inning. Strike two, one and two. Davis, three home runs. 14 RBIs. <laughs> Foul out of play left side. And it stays one and two. Don's baseball brought to you by Lux Bus America. Hey Don's fans, get your people moving with Lux Bus the official transportation service of USF Athletics. One and two on Davis, who leads off the seventh here. Two and two. Line drive, right field, base hit to the corner. Davis thinking two, he's on his way to second. The throw, he slides, he is safe, it's a double. Davis two for four. And here's the Don shortstop, Winkler. Hits her even now at 9-9. Nine, nine. Shortstop, Jack Winkler. And here comes Greg Moore. And he's going to make a pitching change. He's looking over his left shoulder the whole way of walking out to the mound. He looks determined to make a change here. He hasn't lifted his arm yet, but he was looking over his shoulder the whole way out. Talking right now with Hewlett.
And after all that, he finally now signals a right-hander. You could just tell by his body language that he was going to make a move, but I think he wanted to get a couple more pitches for his right-hander out there, so he waited. So we have a new pitcher for St. Mary's. We'll tell you about him next right here on the WCC Network. If you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus, in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet, mix, and spark. Eyes open. Doors open. It's real. You can feel it. You can be a part of it. And you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit. Providence Credit Union is rooted in Jack Winkler. All right, new pitcher out of the bullpen is a right-hander, Liam Steigerwald. 6'5", 220 from San Ramon, a transfer from UC Santa Barbara. Steigerwald making his 17th appearance of the year. The Gales have a really solid bullpen. They bring arms out of the bullpen, and there's some pretty low ERA totals. Breaking ball strike to Winkler. Case in point for Steigerwald, 16 innings or 16 appearances, 26 and a third innings. Only five runs allowed, three earned. The earned run average, 1.03 and a record of 2-0. and oh. You got Hobbs, you got Campos, you got Steigerwald, Hewlett. All bullpen arms that are below 3.00 ERAs. Hewlett was 2.45, Steigerwall 1.03, Campos we saw yesterday 0.73, and Hobbs who pitched yesterday 0.44. Owen oh, 2 to Winkler with Davis on at second. Winkler is 0 for 1, couple of walks, he has scored a run. Outside with a breaking ball. One and two. Third pitcher of the day for St. Mary's. Talk about the strength of the Gales bullpen there. Their issue this year really for St. Mary's has been trying to score runs. As a team just hitting 229. The Dons as a team batting 254. St. Mary's as a team entering today 17 home runs. USF with 40 home runs. The Gales can really pitch it, but they've had trouble sometimes getting runs across in ball games. They've scored two today. 
They have not scored beyond the fifth inning in this series. One ball, two strikes to Winkler. Nobody out. We're in the seventh inning. Line drive, left center field. That's going to drop in and go to deep left center. Winkler thinking double. He slides in. He's safe. Davis scores easily. And it's six to two Dons. For Winkler, his 28th RBI of the year. My name is So Winkler trades spots with Davis at second base. And now it's Nick Jovetich standing in. Don's up four runs. Gales have just six outs to work with here in this ball game. We're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Swing and a miss by Jovetich. He has the big hit in this game. A two-out bases clearing double in the fourth inning that broke a 2-2 tie and put the Dons up 5-2. Outside, one ball, one strike. Final game of the day in the West Coast Conference. Everything else is complete. Out of play foul. Jovetic hitting 228, two home runs, 23 RBIs. Ground ball right back to the pitcher. He's got it, Steigerwald. And on the play, Winkler moves to third. One out. Brings up the Don's DH, Jordan Vujovic. So now the Dons could add another run with an out here. Just one out in the inning with Winkler at third. Strike one to Vujovic, who's 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. Vujovic, one for four in the series. Strike two at the knees. 0-2. Oh Strikeout situation with that runner at third and one out in the inning. Don, six runs, ten hits, an error. St. Mary's, two runs, nine hits, no errors. Outside to Vujovic, one and two. Ground ball. It's hit at the first baseman, Gioso. He looks Winkler back to third, and then he takes the ball to the bag. And two down. So Vujovic unable to get the run in. It'll now be up to Harris Williams with two downs. Williams a double and a pair of strikeouts today. He's one for three. He's hitting 263 for the season. Oh, 
Outside to Williams and gets away from Santini, but Winkler unable to scoot home. One ball, no strikes. Up high, 2-0 to Williams. Swing and a miss, 2-1. and one. Big cut by Williams. Williams, four for 11 in the series with four extra base hits. Three doubles, a homer. Swing and a miss, strike two. Two and two. Just a hair outside. And the count now full to Williams. Munoz waits in the on deck circle. Winkler at third, a run in, six to two Dons. We're in the seventh inning. Popped up. Will it stay in play? It will in foul ground, but it stays in the yard. Catch made by the catcher Santini, and it's a foul out for Williams, and that's the third out of the inning. The Dodds played a run. They leave a runner at third. We go on to the eighth inning, six to two Dons on the WCC Network. Well, we move along now to the eighth inning. The Gales at the bottom of the lineup, the number nine hitter, Santini. There'll be a pinch hitter for Santini. It'll be Austin Elder. Elder hitting 118. The first pitch fouled and out of play.
Elder, a junior from Concord out of De La Salle High School. And it's inside the Elder, one and one. New pitcher for USF on the mound, the right-hander out of the bullpen, Alex Pham. And a sky fly ball to center. Jovetic ranging to his right. He's got it. One out. Fan pitched here on Friday, making his 17th appearance of the year. That's the second most out of the USF bullpen. Barron has appeared in 19 games. Fam has pitched 46 in a third innings. He's allowed 36 hits, 21 runs, 19 earned runs. Opponents hitting 213 against Fam. He has 65 strikeouts in 46 and a third. A record of two and four. A 3.69 earned run average and four saves. In the game here on Friday, Pham went two innings. Walked one, had a couple of strikeouts. Threw 26 pitches on Friday. Ground ball on two hops to grime. Easy over to Munoz and two down. And now it's the shortstop, Velasquez. Two outs, eighth inning. Gales down to four outs remaining. Don's trying to win the WCC part of this series. These same two teams will play tomorrow. First pitch, 3 o'clock in Moraga, but not part of West Coast Conference play. High and outside from Fan. Strike. One ball, one strike. Two and one now from Pham. Velasquez, two for four in the series. He's four for 11. Fly ball center field. Over is Jovetic. He tracks it down. It's a one, two, three inning. That's the first time today that the Gales have been retired in order. Bottom of the eighth next, downs in front six to two on the WCC Network. If you've been here, you know the feeling. If you haven't, you will. It's a certain energy. It's a certain optimism. Here on this campus in the heart of the city, people and ideas meet, mix, and spark. Eyes open, doors open. It's real. You can feel it. You can be a part of it, and you don't even have to be here in body to feel it in spirit. Bottom half of the ninth inning for USF. It's the bottom of the lineup, the seven, eight, nine hitters. It'll be Munoz, then Oliphant, who's now catching, then Grime. Against Steigerwald. Munoz, big swing and a miss, one and one. 
Munoz, one for two. He was hit by a pitch in the second inning. Struck out in the fourth. Singled in the fifth and was gunned down at second, trying to stretch that into a double. Two balls and a strike to Munoz. At 298 for the season. And ball three, three and one. Steigerwald kicks, deals. Swing and a miss, count full. Dons have six runs, ten hits, and error. St. Mary's two runs, nine hits, and no errors. Dons won five to four on Friday. Gales won six to four yesterday. Rubber game. Although it is a four-game set, the two teams play again tomorrow, but not part of West Coast Conference action. Three balls, two strikes to Munoz. Swing and a miss struck him out. Munoz went after ball four. That was down low and out of the strike zone. Everything else has gone final around the West Coast Conference. Pacific won at Santa Clara 11 to 3. The Tigers win that series. Portland wins at home 6 to 2 over the Waves. Chad Stevens 2 for 5 for the Pilots with a grand slam. Brad McVay picked up the win for Portland. And so the Pilots win that series over the Waves. Next weekend, Gonzaga, a three-game series at Portland. Pepperdine at home for three against the Broncos. These Gales, as this is grounded to short by Oliphant and across from Velasquez. The Gales are at home for a three-game series against Loyola Marymount. And the Tigers entertain BYU for three. The Dons will be out of conference next weekend. They'll take on Sacramento State in a four-game series. A single game Friday, which we'll have here on the WCC Network at 3 o'clock on Friday. A doubleheader Saturday up in our state's capital. And then the two teams will play a single ball game again here on Sunday. We'll have the Friday and Sunday games right here on the WCC Network. And the Dons will be scoreboard watching, but really the only series that will impact them will be the Gonzaga-Portland series. The Dons will probably be rooting for the Pilots. They are in a much better position to maintain pace and catch Portland. I say catch Portland. The two teams are tied, but Portland has one less loss. If the Dons end up in a tie with the Pilots at the end, they win the tie break. This is Grime, who's taken the count to two and one with two outs in the inning. Grime one for three, hitting 271. And he pushes that one towards the dugout and foul. If you're thinking ahead to the St. Mary's ninth inning, they're in the heart of the order. They'll have the number three hitter, the D.H. Banks. Then the center fielder, Mann. And the second baseman, Mistoni. Foul that a play by Grime. Count two balls, two strikes. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Just a reminder, you can help support the USF student athlete experience during the COVID-19 pandemic by donating to the Dons Together initiative. Here's the 2-2, swing and a miss. That's the third out of the inning. Your donations will help support our USF student athletes. Donate today, learn more at usfdons.com slash Dons Together. That's usfdons.com slash Dons Together. Ninth inning, last chance for the Gales. It's a six to two Dons lead on the WCC Network. Provident Credit Union is rooted in education and is proud to be the official credit union for USF. 
Making your life easy is what Provident Credit Union is all about. Like our Super Reward Checking, with one of the highest interest rates in the nation. And there are no ATM or monthly service fees. Zero. To get started, visit one of our many Bay Area locations or go online to ProvidenceCU.org slash USF. Get the official University of San Francisco checking account that pays you money from Provident Credit Union. Well, top half of the ninth inning, last chance for St. Mary's. It's the number three hitter, the D.H. Banks, against the Don's right-hander, Alex Pham. And that's a strike. One ball, one strike to Banks. Banks in the ball game is one for four. A ground out, a strike out, a single, a fly out. In the series, Banks is two for ten. Ground ball, left field corner. That's a fair ball. And Banks is going around first and on his way into second. Well, Keisha was way off the bag. And Banks was able to ground it past him towards the corner. So the Gales have a leadoff double here in the ninth inning. You can see Kieschel just had no chance to get to it. And here's the center fielder man. He's the cleanup hitter. He's a one for three with a walk. In the series, four for eight. Gales need to get two more runners on before they would bring the potential tying run to home plate. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Man hitting 262. He has four home runs. 23 runs driven in. Each team has 10 hits. Outside. One and one. Line drive right at Grime, and one out. So that's the first out of the inning. The Gales now down to two outs to maneuver with. They have a runner at second. The batter is the second baseman, Mistoni. Second baseman, Nick Mistoni. Fastball strike. Mistoni 0 for 4 today. Two for 12 in the series. His average down to 230. Don's trying to get to 15 and 9 in the West Coast Conference. Low. One ball, one strike to Mistoni. Yeah. 
Popped foul out of play. And that's strike two. Don's 5-4 winners on Friday. On Friday, the win for Barasa. And Pham earned the save. Don's won it 5-4. to four. Five runs, eight hits. St. Mary's four runs on six hits. Yesterday afternoon, this is ball two. St. Mary's won six to four. Ryan Torek picked up the win for the Gales. Grant Nishak took the loss. St. Mary's yesterday, six runs, ten hits. The Don's four runs on four hits. So this is the rubber game of this West Coast Conference Series. Don's in front, six to two. Just a bit outside. Count full. It's Banks at second, one out, and a full count to Mistoni. He lost him, ball four. So the Gales need one more base runner. And they bring the potential tying run to the plate. The batter now is the first baseman, Gioso. Double play, ground ball would end the ball game here. Runners at first and second. Just one out. We're in the ninth inning. Don's in front, six to two. St. Mary's making some noise in the ninth inning. Fam trying to close it out. Outside, one and zero. Oh. Gioso one for two with a walk and a hit by pitch. He's been on three times. In the series, two for ten. The catcher, Oliphant, out now in conversation with Fam. One ball, no count, no strikes to count on Gioso. Fouled out of play. One and one. Fam pitched here on Friday. I think he's the only pitcher we've seen twice in this series on either team. Maybe Barron also had a stint. There's a swing and a miss. No, we have not seen Barron previously in the series. So Fam is the only pitcher on either club to make an appearance twice so far. These two teams will play again tomorrow. There's strike three called. Boy, Gioso had a word for the home plate umpire, Dwayne Finley, but that pitch looked like it was right down the heart of home plate. Gioso didn't agree. So the Gales now down to their final out. It's the left fielder, Ellis. Ellis one for four, hitting a 237. Four for 11 in the series, down low, ball one. Banks the runner at second, Mistoni at first, Munoz playing behind Mistoni. The Don's not too concerned. Banks the lead runner, not with great speed. 
And a ground ball left side. Kieschel's got it on a dive. The throw over to Grime. And that's the ball game. What a play by Kieschel to end it on a dive to the ground to pick up the grounder. And then over to Grime. And the Dons have won the ball game. So the final totals in the ball game for USF, six runs on 10 hits, one error, six runners left on. St. Mary's, two runs, 10 hits, no errors, and 12 left on the base pass. The winning pitcher out of the bullpen is Jesse Barron. Barron, a new career best with six strikeouts in a bullpen Middle relief Jones, effort improves to three and two. The losing pitcher is the starter for the Gales, Kai Bush. He drops to five and five. The key hit of the ball game was the two out, three run double hit by Nick Jovetich that broke a 2-2 tie, and the Dons win it 6-2. They take the West Coast Conference portion of this series two games to one, and they'll play a fourth game tomorrow in Moraga that will not be part of the West Coast Conference standing. So now right up to the minute, Gonzaga in first, 14-4. and four. San Diego next, 15-6. and six. The Dons are 15-9. and nine. They only have three games remaining, a series in Spokane at Gonzaga. Portland 13-8, and eight. BYU 11-10. LMU 9 and 12, St. Mary's 10 and 14, Pepperdine 7 and 11, Santa Clara 7 and 17, and Pacific 4 and 14. They won their first series in league play today over the Broncos. As Pacific won earlier, Portland won earlier, 6 to 2 over the Waves. Next weekend, Gonzaga at Portland for three. Pepperdine home against Santa Clara for three. St. Mary's and LMU will meet in Moraga, a three-game series in Stockton. The Tigers and Cougars will play a three-game set. But the Dons will have their eyes on that Portland-Gonzaga matchup. They need the Pilots to win a couple of ball games in that series. The Dons go next at St. Mary's tomorrow at a conference at 3 o'clock. And then next weekend, a four-game series against Sacramento State. Our next broadcast is Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. for the Dons and the Hornets. Time of the ball game today. A lengthy three hours and 39 minutes as the Dons win at 6-2 over the Gales. USF for the year now 20 and 21. St. Mary's falls to 21 and 22. Thanks to Pat Stacy and Wu Win and Mark Rivera for his help in the press box and entire broadcast crew. Dodge taking over the Gale 6 to 2. Pat Olson saying thanks for watching and so long from the hilltop on the WCC network.